Welcome to Susquehanna University's annual Scholars Recognition Program, a virtual event this year. I am Dave Ramsaran, Provost and Dean of the Faculty and Professor of Sociology. On this occasion, we are pleased to recognize and congratulate Susquehanna's most successful student scholars. We will begin by recognizing those whose commitment and support have helped to make these students' achievements possible. Our guest speaker this evening is the recipient of the 2020 Donald D. Housley Teaching Award, Dr. Anna Andes, Associate Professor of Theater and Coordinator of Women and Gender Studies. The Donald D. Housley Teaching Award is granted in recognition of the distinguished teaching of the recipient during the college year just ending. The award recognizes a most distinguished member of the faculty who served from 1967 to 2004 as both Dean of Arts and Sciences and Charles B. Dagenstein Professor of History. He started SU's first teaching cell, a small, cross-disciplinary, multi-generational group of faculty meetings regularly to discuss pedagogy. Much later, it led to the creation of SU's Center for Teaching and Learning. An extraordinary and highly respected teacher in his own right, and the first recipient in 1972 of the Susquehanna University Teaching Award, Dr. Housley also authored Susquehanna University 1858 to 2000, A Goodly Heritage, the definitive history of the university covering its first 142 years. Dr. Andes received her master's and PhD from the University of Colorado, Boulder. Additional information about Dr. Andes can be found on the university's website. Welcome, Dr. Anna Andes. Thank you. First of all, I would like to personally welcome and say thank you to the students and the parents present for my talk today. I, I am sorry, of course, that I cannot deliver my thoughts to you in person, but I appreciate your patience with my COVID-era taped remarks. It is an honor and a privilege to have been invited to speak with you. Winning this year's teaching award has prompted me to reflect on my career as a teacher, to reflect upon the evolution of my pedagogy. I am not the same teacher I was when I began my career, Winning this award has also prompted me to reflect upon the many students that it has been my great privilege to teach, and most importantly, to learn from. They are the reason that I have changed and grown and that I continue to be inspired to teach semester after semester. It is the students. It is always the students. As teachers, if we're smart, if we're savvy, if we're wise, we are always ready and eager to learn from our students. Their individual and collective voices matter. Their perspectives on our specialties is important and oh so relevant. Their concerns about their futures and their efforts to make connections between their academic achievements within the safe confines of SU and their future professional lives requires our attention, our mentorship, and our evolving of our pedagogy. So whilst thinking about all of this, I thought both students and parents might appreciate hearing about some remarkable students that have graced the path of my teaching career thus far. One story is about an individual and one is about a group. Each story has inspired me to be a better teacher. Each student in these stories models what I've come to think of as the scholar slash artist student. Now, to clarify, yes, I am a theater professor. And yes, this is why I view student learning and achievement through a creative lens. However, 
I believe that there is a creative element to all forms of learning and success in all courses of study, in all professions. To begin, the first story is about an honors program thought and civilization class. Generally speaking, the Thought and Civilization seminars explore the evolution of thought in Western civilization. The topic I chose for this seminar was Trojan War Literature. As a class, we sought to explore and consider why this millennium-old myth still serves as fruitful source material for novels, plays, movies, etc., even today in the 21st century. It is important to note that the students in the class hailed from different majors of study from across the SU curriculum. Studying the Trojan War was a novel idea to all of them. None of them possessed any particular expertise coming into this class. By the end of our semester together, this class had developed and mastered its own theoretical language, its own theoretical terms, its own theoretical perspective. This amazing class founded the theory of the damsel, as I've come to think of it. Early in the semester, members of the class commented that Helen of Troy and King Priam's daughter Briseis could be thought of as damsels in distress in need of rescuing by a hero. This was a fair observation and not at all unique in the study of this mythic story. No sooner had this damsel in distress observation been made, however, than the class began to theoretically explore the assumptions that defined the noun damsel. They mined new depths pertaining, in other words, to that common observation. Using this word damsel as a base, they began to analyze the mythic storylines involving many of its female and male characters along the following lines, and I'll give you a few examples. Students would opine, she's been damseled, or he's damseling her, or she has damseled the other woman, or my favorite theoretical nuance, she has de-damseled herself. That last remark about de-damseling marked the complex analytical turn of the class's collective crafting of their own unique theoretical language to analyze ancient myths from their own 21st century perspective. They fused their understanding of personal agency, or lack thereof, with a well-worn narrative trope. They were applying knowledge learned to an academic question posed creatively. In other words, they were collectively functioning as scholar slash artist students. I was thrilled. I was so impressed, so impressed. I cheered them on, validating their terms by using them myself. I used their terms in the crafting of formal assignments. Their final essay exams were riddled with discussions of damseling and de-damseling of both female and male characters. Remarkable, truly remarkable. In my own scholarship since teaching this class that semester, when um, I think about and analyze characters and mythic tropes, I use their theoretical language and ideas, always giving them credit. A year after this class, I presented a paper at a conference on a pedagogy panel. My presentation was about enabling students to learn from themselves. Everyone present for that presentation was impressed by that class and its creative scholarship. The students in that class honed and acquired the following skills, creative problem solving, collaborative analyzing and theorizing, independent thought, and seeking and creating new insight into old material. And most of all, they learned ownership over knowledge seeking and creating. My second story pertains to these. Pages ripped from a magazine, a fashion magazine. Last spring, a few weeks before the pandemic hit, 
I stepped on these pages when I opened my office door. I was immediately struck by the somewhat creepy images of women on the pages and startled by their presence on my floor. And then I noticed the bright green sticky with a note that read, Dear Dr. Andes, I found these and thought of our class. I thought you might find them interesting, so I wanted to share. Signed, Kara. When I looked more closely at the images, I immediately saw the connection she was making to the ideas we had explored in class. But here's the wonderful thing. The class was the semester before. It wasn't a theater class, and Kara was no longer my student. But yet here she was, a scholar, artist, student, presence in my office. The class she had taken with me was a film class. It had nothing to do, per se, with fashion magazines, but apparently it did. Kara had made the connection. Kara had connected the dots from one thing to another. She had applied what she had learned in one field of study creatively to another field of study. And in true scholar fashion, she had done it on her own. The story of these fashion magazine pages may seem of minor importance on the surface, but I would suggest that Kara, in that moment, achieved an almost profound moment of scholar artistry. She was paying forward her learning. She was applying knowledge beyond the classroom, beyond a strictly academic pursuit. I am this semester teaching that very same class, and I will be using the images given to me by Kara later in the semester to underscore the very points which Kara made on that sticky, paying it forward. Several years ago, a theater department colleague referred to me as a scholar slash artist. In the moment, I was intimidated. That felt like such a lofty phrase because there was no and, but rather a slash, which implied a sense of wholeness that seemed way too intimidating. Maybe I could think of myself as a scholar. Maybe I could think of myself as an artist, but both simultaneously, since then, however, I have come to think of the growth of my students, both theater students and non-theater students, with this phrase in mind. It has helped me to appreciate the wholeness of their learning, their achievements, their contributions, and growth, and to learn from them, to collaborate with them, to celebrate them. It is that which I want to pass on to you today. Think of yourselves as scholar slash artists. Go ahead, try it. It may seem strange at first, but you might find it grows on you. You may be business majors, science majors, philosophy majors, etc. But you are also liberal arts students, whether working within your field specifically or on its fringes, you are creative thinkers, learning to apply knowledge, scholarship. The employers of the world, I promise you, are seeking you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Andes. Before moving on to the student recognition part of the program, I want to acknowledge members of the faculty of Susquehanna. In addition to the Donald D. Housley Teaching Award, Two additional teaching awards are presented each year, usually at commencement. The John C. Horn Award for Distinguished Scholarship and Creative Activity, and the Lawrence A. Lemons Distinguished Academic Advising Award. The recipient of the 2020 John C. Horn Award for Distinguished Scholarship and Creative Activity is Dr. Ed Slavashev. Professor of History. The John C. Horn Award memorializes Dr. John C. Horn, a former longtime member and chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the University. The award recognizes a faculty member for outstanding scholarship and conscientious service to the university. 
and the recipient offers a public lecture in the following academic year. Information about Dr. Slavashek can be found on the university's website. The 2020 Lawrence A. Lemons Distinguished Academic Advising Award recipient is Dr. Michael Ozlansky, Assistant Professor of Accounting. The Lawrence A. Lemons Distinguished Academic Advising Award memorializes a master teacher, public school teacher, and devoted advisor to students who served the youth of the Nebraska Panhandle for more than 50 years. The educational journeys of minority, international, and socioeconomically challenged students were especially meaningful to him and among those he championed and cherished the most. Information about Dr. Oslansky can be found on the university's website. Finally, I would like to recognize the hard work of all members of SU's faculty. Thank you. Coming up next is a list of university scholars whom we are pleased to recognize and honor this evening. They have all earned a cumulative grade point average of 3.75, consistent with university scholars' performance. Also included in this list are students who will be recognized as an award or scholarship recipient this evening. These names are listed alphabetically. Congratulations to all of you on your accomplishments.
The university confers awards each year on students who distinguish themselves in overall scholarship, in a particular academic discipline, or in notable service to the academic community. These awards will be conferred by the following persons. My name is Valerie Martin, and I'm the Vice Provost and Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. The Alexander W. and Anna O. Abramovich Memorial Scholarship Endowment Fund was established in 2008 in memory of Anna Abramovich, class of 1958. It is awarded to students majoring in one of the biological sciences who have demonstrated academic promise. Congratulations to the following recipients. Erica Allen, a biochemistry major from Oliphant, Zachary Klein, a biology major from Enola, Eba Faisal Khan, a biomedical sciences major from Danville, Bailey Romberger, a biomedical sciences major from Klingerstown, Jessica Saylor, a biochemistry major from Gettysburg, Allison Stagg, a biomedical sciences major from Wyckoff, New Jersey, Brianna Taylor, a neuroscience major from Liverpool, New York, and Brianna Watts, a biochemistry and physics double major from Duncannon. Hello, I'm Matt Rosu, Dean of the Sigmund Y School of Business here at Susquehanna University. The Andrew C. Long Class of 28 Scholarship is awarded to students who have demonstrated academic promise, are majoring in business and or are from the Shimokan, Cole Township, Ranshaw, Paxinus, and Shimokan Township surrounding areas. Awards are made with a request that recipients shall, upon achieving earning capacity, make in gratitude an appropriate contribution to the scholarship fund. Congratulations to the following award recipients. Jaden Carper, a biology and psychology double major from Sunbury. Gregory Hiriak, a management major from Gilbertsville. Cameron Jacoby, a finance major from Shimokan. Cassidy Kellogg, a finance major from Westbrook, Maine. Kieran Kenny, a marketing major from Pleasantville, New York. Michael Levine, a finance major from Manahawkin, New Jersey. Colton Lovell, an accounting major from Linden. Ryan Monroy, a finance major from Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Taishira Robinson, a business administration major from Philadelphia. Francis Ross, a management major from Archibald. Michael Ruish, a finance major from Fogelsville. Luke Smith, a finance major from Schuylkill Haven. Jacob Staley, an accounting major from Catawissa. Hello, I'm Dr. Geneve Henry, professor and chairperson of the chemistry department. The chemistry prize established in 1979 by the Parents Association annually recognizes an outstanding student majoring in a chemistry discipline. This year's recipient is Caitlin Gallagher, a biochemistry major from Duncannon. My name is David McLaughlin. I'm an associate professor of education and the current head of the education department. The Winifred Shaheen Award is given to a student majoring in education who has achieved academic distinction 
while also exhibiting outstanding leadership and service. This year, the award goes to Jessica Leiter from Harrisburg and Madison Rice from Sealands Grove. Both are early childhood education majors with a focus on special education. Hello, my name is David Imhoff, and I am the interim chair of the history department. The William A. Russ Jr. History Scholarship is awarded to a junior or senior for academic accomplishment, contributions to the study of history, and promise of scholarship. The scholarship was established in honor of the late Dr. William Adam Russ Jr., a history professor from 1933 to 1968 by his former students and friends. This year's recipient is Ethan Bilson, a history secondary education major from Phoenixville. Congratulations, Ethan. I'm Ken Brackey, professor of mathematics and computer science. The Stein Robeson Mathematical Prize was established in the memory of Reverend Dr. H. M. Stein and Dr. George M. Robeson and is awarded annually to the student who has the highest average in the study of mathematics during the freshman and sophomore years. Congratulations to Erica Yetz, a mathematics secondary education major from Mapleton Depot, and to Megan Herbine, a mathematics and economics double major from Whitehall. Hi, I'm Lynn Palermo, Associate Professor of French. The Nancy A. Cairns Scholarship Fund was established in 1990 through an estate gift from this much-loved French professor. The fund provides scholarships for Susquehanna University students majoring in French. This year's recipient is Nicole Grace, a French Studies Education K-12 major from North Wales, Pennsylvania. Congratulations, Nicole. Hello, I'm David Steinow. I'm Associate Professor of Music and Chair of the Department of Music, and I have two awards to present. The Elizabeth G. Eister Award in Music was established in 1972 by friends, relatives, and parents of Elizabeth G. Eister, Class of 72. The award is presented annually by the Department of Music to an outstanding junior whose performing and academic accomplishments show promise of outstanding musical achievement. This year's recipient is Tyler Shadle, a music and theater performance double major from Tower City. The recipient of the Presser Foundation Music Scholarship given annually to an outstanding music major entering the senior year is Kathleen Owens, a music education instrumental major from Stockholm, New Jersey. Congratulations, Tyler and Katie. Thank you. My name is Samia Zan. I am the department head and an associate professor in the physics department. The Rees Physics Prize was established in 1987 by a family of a physics alumni, Jeff Rees, class of 86, and is awarded annually to a junior who meets the required cumulative grade point and exhibits strong interest and ability in physics. The prize this year is presented to Catherine Coe, a physics secondary education major from West Milton. The Rogers Physics Prize was established in 1994 by a physics graduate to memorialize the many contributions made by Edward and Blanche Rogers, both of the class of 42, to the physics program. The physics faculty annually selects an outstanding physics student for this award. The prize this year is presented to Jocelyn McMahon, a physics and computer science double major from Comac, New York. I'm Nick Clark, department head and associate professor of political science, uh, and I'm here to award the Pi Sigma Alpha Award, which was established in 1979 to, by the Parents Association and annually recognizes an outstanding student or students majoring in political science. This year we have two recipients. Congratulations to Kyle Carey, 
a political science and public policy, domestic policy double major from Savannah Park, Maryland, and Morgan Dubbs, a psychology, political science, and public policy, domestic policy triple major from Julian. The Tressler Science Scholarship is awarded to students majoring in science from Lower Northumberland County and Upper Dauphin County who demonstrate academic promise. Awards are made with the request that recipients shall, upon achieving earning capacity, make in gratitude an appropriate contribution to the scholarship fund. This year's award recipient is Jaden Carper, a biology and psychology double major from Sunbury. The Tressler Accounting Scholarship is part of the Tressler Accounting Endowment Fund, established in 1989 in a gift from the late Alan C. Tressler, class of 1929. This year, the scholarship is presented to Brett Brassington from Elysburg and Gavin Perrin from Turbotville. Both are accounting majors. Good evening. I'm Melissa Kimura, Vice President for Advancement. It is my great pleasure to share with you these awards and awardees as I have the honor of working with many Susquehanna alumni and friend donors whose generosity has made these awards and the many others you'll be hearing about tonight possible. I am pleased to present the following university-wide awards. The Vi Raby Messerly Award was endowed in 2003 by her husband Jonathan family, and friends. Mrs. Meserly served Susquehanna University with distinction as its first lady from 1977 to 1984. The award this year goes to Anastasia Balassi, an English publishing and edition major from Hatboro. The Sigmund Wise Prize was established in 2005 in memory of Sigmund Wise, memory of the class of 1903, to commemorate his legacy as an outstanding business and civic leader. It is awarded to a senior majoring in business who has excelled not only in the business curriculum, but also in the liberal arts. This year's recipient is Bailey Hackenberry, a finance and economics general emphasis double major from Mifflin Town. The Sydney and Carol Affelbaum Prize was established in 2005 and commemorates the Affelbaum's commitment to Susquehanna and their loyal friendship with the Wise family. It is awarded to a senior majoring in the liberal arts who has excelled not only in a liberal arts discipline, but also in the creative or performing arts. This year's prize goes to Jonathan Lewis, a music and earth and environmental sciences double major from Richboro. The Joseph I. and Ellen Wise Goldstein Prize was established in 2004 in their honor by the Dagenstein Foundation to recognize the Goldsteins' generosity to Susquehanna University and their special interest in its Sigmund Wise School of Business, named in memory of Mrs. Goldstein's grandfather, who was a 1903 Susquehanna graduate. The prize is awarded annually to a student majoring in a program within the Sigmund Wise School who has demonstrated the potential for leadership in the business world and a commitment to ethical decision making. This year's prize recipient is Caroline King, a management major from North Kingstown, Rhode Island. The Joel and Trudy Cunningham Prize was established in 2005 and commemorates the Cunningham's leadership as Susquehanna's president and first lady in developing the Sigmund Wise School of Business into an outstanding undergraduate business program worthy of its namesake. It is awarded to a senior majoring in mathematics or science who has excelled not only in the discipline but also in the creative or performing arts. This year's award goes to Ava Piata, an Earth and Environmental Sciences major from Easton. The Sigmund Wise Prize for Academic Excellence was established in 2011 in memory of Mrs. Goldstein's parents. 
It is awarded annually to a junior or senior who, in opinion of the chief academic officer, has performed at a sustained level of excellence in rigorous coursework, research, and independent living. This year's recipients are Victoria Durgan, a communications, digital multimedia, journalism, and environmental studies double major from Allentown, and Amanda Gillette, a creative writing, English, publishing and editing, and German studies triple major from Hillsborough, New Jersey. The Janet C. Wise Prize for Literary Excellence was established in 2011 in memory of Mrs. Goldstein's parents. It is awarded annually to a junior or senior who, in the opinion of the head of the writing program, has produced the most promising work in poetry, fiction, or creative nonfiction. This year's recipients are Amy Jarvis, a creative writing major from Bristol, Rhode Island, and Tyler Parks, a creative writing and English publishing and editing double major from Wilmington, Delaware. The Michael and Christina Alfelbaum Prize was established in 2015 in their memory by the Goldstein family and honors the couple's contributions and connections to the central Susquehanna Valley and to the university. The prize is awarded to a junior or senior who has excelled academically and whose record of community service has been exemplary. This year, the prize is awarded to Elena King, a psychology major from Cole Township. The Sigmund Wise Freshman Prize was reestablished in 2016 in memory of Sigmund Wise, member of the class of 1903 and co-recipient of this award in 1900. The prize revives a tradition of honoring a student who excels academically during the first year. The awardee is recognized at the start of the sophomore year. This year's recipient is Julia Adams, an English publishing and editing and marketing double major from Palmyra, New Jersey. The Sigmund Wise Sophomore Prize was reestablished in 2016 in memory of Sigmund Wise, member of the class of 1903 and recipient of this award in 1901. The prize revives a tradition of honoring a student who excels academically during the sophomore year. The awardee is recognized at the start of the junior year. This year's award goes to John Sabella, a history and political science double major from Vineland, New Jersey. The Sarah Kirkland Prize was established in 2016 to honor her extraordinary leadership in the role of Susquehanna's Vice President for University Relations and Executive Vice President for Administration and Planning from 1985 to 2014. She also served as the university's interim president during 2000 and 2001. The prize is awarded to a senior majoring in a liberal arts discipline whose record as a campus community leader is regarded as exemplary. I am pleased to present this award to Israel Colazzo Luciano, a Spanish Studies and Sociology double major from New Oxford. The J. and Marsha Lemons Prize was established in 2016 and commemorates the Lemons leadership as Susquehanna's President and First Lady in advancing the value of student engagement and achievement in the undergraduate learning experience. The prize is awarded annually to as many as three juniors whose academic accomplishments make them competitive candidates for national and international awards. This year's awards recipients are Anastasia Farley, an English publishing and editing and creative writing double major from Dundalk, Maryland, Kayla Harad, a mathematics 3-2 pre-engineering physics and computer science triple major from Baltimore, Maryland, and John Pelez, a biomedical sciences and French studies double major from Hazleton. Good evening, I'm Jonathan Green, president of the university. Congratulations to all of our award recipients. In this year, like no other, you have had a stark affirmation of the benefits of learning in community. You have developed new resiliency and you have learned to appreciate the importance of grace. As each of us has encountered new challenges, we have found ourselves grateful for the patience of others and in turn, we have recognized the need to pay it forward. We have learned to be ever more creative and we have come to appreciate how much we mean to each other. That is a reification, a making real, of the humanitas that is the core of a liberal arts education. What does it mean to be human? Humane, humble. How will that define your role in the world? How can we lift each other up 
to achieve collective betterment. This is when the three pillars of our mission, achievement, leadership, and service, become one. This is what you have done and what I know you will continue to do. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you.